May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours. Amen. Friends, it's good to have you join us in the scripture reading and sermon. Let's pray together. Our Father, you are the greatest among all things. You are the God above all gods. You are the king above all kings. Everything is in the palm of your hand. You are the rock upon which we stand. Lord, your son has given us new life. Your spirit has been poured out so that we might be renewed and cleansed. And so, Lord, we thank you for all your many blessings. We ask that as you've gathered us here, that we might listen to what you have to say. We pray that you'd comfort us uh, in our affliction and that you would discomfort us in our complacency so that we might be made new. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Here now our scripture reading this week from the Gospel of Luke at chapter 13. This is our second week in the season of Lent. Hear this scripture. On that very day, some Pharisees came saying to Jesus, Get out and depart from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And Jesus said to them, Go tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected, I shall reach my goal. Nevertheless, I must journey today, tomorrow, and the next day, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish, perish outside of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills pro, uh, the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. And assuredly, I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the, of the Lord. This is the word of God. It belongs to you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all of our hearts be holy and pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, this is the second week of the season of Lent, that season where we journey with Jesus along that long, dusty, difficult, cross-shadowed journey where Jesus is going towards the cross. Last week we saw Jesus uh, having 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, just as Israel was wandering in the wilderness of 40 days and 40 nights, just as Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, they were in the wilderness. Just as Moses uh, was in on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights and fasting, Jesus was in the wilderness. Here we see him uh, on his way towards Jerusalem, and here he's talking about his three-day journey. So the season of Lent is a time where we journey with Christ into the wilderness, towards the cross, and then on Easter Sunday we celebrate his resurrection. Lent is that time where we remember not just the easy and good things in life, not just God's blessings, but also hardships. It's a time set aside where we confess our sins, where we recognize our mortality, that from dust we have come and to dust we shall depart. It's where we acknowledge how limited we are, how broken we are. It's a time where, as Christ says, we pick up our cross, we deny ourselves, and we follow him. For we discover in Lent that Christ not only is with us where, wherever we are, but he's actually grabbed a hold of us and brought him on this journey to the wilderness and through the wilderness. You see, when Christ died, we, we died with him. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, one died for all, therefore all died. So when Christ died, we died with him. When he went through the wilderness and where we sinned and turned left, he picked us up and he turned right. He corrected our mistakes. He bent our broken humanity straight again. 
He put us on the right path. He course corrected our dilapidated humanity. So last week we looked at Jesus 40 days and 40 nights fasting in the wilderness as he did battle with the evil one, with that one who whispers the serpent in the garden and the tempter in the wilderness for Israel. Jesus was battling with the devil. And as Jesus came out of the wilderness that the Spirit brought him into, he went into his ministry. Well, here we see Jesus with his face set towards Jerusalem. We see in our passage today, Jesus says, uh, a prophet uh, cannot be a prophet uh, that doesn't perish um, outside Jerusalem. Prophets are to perish in Jerusalem, uh, unfortunately, but it's true that throughout the Old Testament. Prophets are stoned again and again like Jeremiah, uh, stoned in Jerusalem, killed in Jerusalem. We know that this is what is to happen to Jesus. So some Pharisees come to him and they say, get out of here, leave, because Herod's coming and he wants to take you out. He wants to kill you. We already saw that Herod took out John the Baptist, remember? And even before that, in the beginning of Matthew's gospel, Herod's father took out all of the infant baby boys, just like Pharaoh in Exodus. You see, Herod is a new Pharaoh. He has a new name, he has a new face, but it's the same old Pharaoh. It's the same Pharaoh in Egypt that oppressed his people, uh, God's people, that uh, enslaved them, that killed them, uh, that forced them to worship false gods. Herod is like Pharaoh, and Jesus has harsh words for Herod here. He says, go tell that fox. Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be set to my goal. What is he talking about? Well, last week we talked about how uh, in Lent we are a third day people. God does miracles on the third day. Jesus rose again on the third day. And so here Jesus is saying, that he's a third day journey from Jerusalem. He still has more work to do. He's still bringing God's kingdom to earth. Remember as we pray, uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Jesus is bringing God's kingdom down on earth. He's healing those who are ill. He's, he's casting out evil spirits in others. Friends, I don't know about you, but our world, needs a lot of, of curing and healing. Jesus is still present with us today, healing our illnesses, comforting you and me in our own fragility. Jesus is still here rebuking the evil that's in the world, rebuking the things that are shattered and that are wicked and are messed up. He's calling out Herod here, and he's telling Herod, I'm not going to back down. I'm still bringing God's kingdom, and I won't stop. And Jesus goes on to tell his disciples, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I have commanded them. So now Jesus has told us, commanded us, in the Great Commission, to go and extend his kingdom work. This kingdom work on these three days of healing, of casting out the evil one. But what's on the third day? On the third day, Jesus says, I will reach my goal. What is that goal? That goal, believe it or not, is the cross. That's what he's talking about. Because then he goes on to say, uh, prophets are always killed in Jerusalem. Something is going to happen in Jerusalem that will change everything, and it has to do with his death. It has to do with him finally overcoming all the forces of evil and sin and death on the cross. And so first, Jesus invites us along with him on to walk with him on the three-day journey. So first we see here, that we are to walk with Jesus on this three-day journey. It's not an easy road. 
It's a road that asks a lot of us. We are to allow Jesus to heal us. We are to allow Jesus to cast out the evil in us. How does this happen? How do we apply it to our lives? Well, we confess our sins to God. We ask God to forgive us for the ways that we've, we've sinned against him, the way we've sinned against others, we, the ways we haven't loved God or neighbor. So we allow God to do his healing kingdom work on us first. And that, that's what we see in Lent. And then he calls us forth to serve our neighbor as well. There's so many ways God is calling you and you and you and me to serve our neighbors. It could be like the Julian Food Pantry as we extend food to others. It could be like our prayer shawl ministry where we pray over others who are struggling. It could be providing uh, uh, an arm for someone to cry on, a shoulder for someone to cry on. It could, it could be us praying for others. It could be us supporting those who are the downtrodden and the outcast. Jesus is calling us on his three-day journey to walk with him as he is with us. But we must remember this journey is not comfortable. In fact, it ends on the cross. Jesus tells us to pick up our cross, die to ourselves, and follow him. And so we know that this journey ends on the cross. Next, we see in our passage, Jesus says about Jerusalem, he says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. Remember, Stephen is going to be stoned in the book of Acts. Jeremiah is taken out um, and others as well. How often, Jesus says this, How often have I wanted to gather your children, the children of Jerusalem, gather them under her wings? But you were not willing. What's Jesus talking about? Jesus, we, we don't look at this passage too often, but it's really amazing that Jesus is likening himself to a mother hen. Jesus is saying that he wishes that like as a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings to protect them. Uh, I know a lot of you have seen this before. A lot of you have chickens yourselves and you've told me about how the hen will protect the chicks around her wings. We remember in scripture how, how God talks, especially in the Psalms, about protecting us in the shadow of your wings. We see this in Psalm 91 and other places, that God is protecting us in the shadow of his wings. Jesus wants to protect Jerusalem in the shadow of his wings. He wants them to be under his wings, why? Well, foxes will eat chicks, right? And he just called Herod a fox. So he wants to protect his people from pharaohs like Herod. He also wants to protect his chicks from the destruction that's going to happen in Jerusalem. We know in the year 70, the temple in Jerusalem is going to fall. Jerusalem is becoming so sinful, so corrupt, that it's going to fall under its own weight. It's so sinful that it is just falling apart. Jesus then goes on to tell uh, Jerusalem, he says, you are desolate, you are empty. That What he's talking about is the temple uh, where God is supposed to dwell, it's empty. God's not there anymore. God has left that house because it's falling apart. Jesus is the new temple. He says, um, my body will, uh, will rise on the third day and I am the new temple. Jesus tells us he is the new temple. And so he gathers us under his wings. So first, we walk with Jesus on a third day journey uh, in Lent. And second, as we walk on that journey, we uh, do well to go under the shadow of his wings. Jesus is calling us into refuge under his wings. God, Jesus, uh, God wants to protect us in, in and through Jesus. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, destruction that's going to come to Jerusalem, as Jesus says. And then last, see, Jesus says, uh, See, your house is left to you desolate. That's the temple. It's empty. Uh, and he says, Assuredly, I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of 
the Lord. Lent is also a time where we wait and we wait patiently for that time when Christ shows up, when Christ raises from the dead. We celebrate that Easter Sunday and now we're living between Christ's resurrection in the past and Christ's final coming. We live in the now and not yet of God's kingdom coming in Jesus and his death and resurrection and yet we're waiting for his final coming. We know things are so broken. We just have to look at the headlines for one moment. Uh, We just have to look around us for one moment. We see how broken our world is. And yet Lent is a time where we orient ourselves. We walk on the three-day journey with Jesus. We hide under the shadow of his wings as he is like a hen uh, guarding us. And then we wait for the time of his appearing. He's promised us he's going to show up. He's promised us that he's the blessed one who's going to come in the name of the Lord. And so we don't we don't walk this journey of Lent without hope. We walk in the hope of the resurrection. We walk in the hope that we ha- that we're not only to suffer and die with Christ. We're not only to die to our old self, to turn around from our old lives to repent we're also to find new and abundant life in Jesus in his resurrection and so we wait with hope friends I just invite you this week um, as you have your time of prayer and scripture reading with the Lord to look for signs of hope to look for as Uh, the weather starts to get nicer. As you start to see, I know a lot of you had bird feeders and love seeing the birds coming out. As some of these birds return uh, in the spring, as you spend time with your grandchildren and your neighbors and your friends, uh, and even uh, folks that you don't like particularly, look for moments of resurrection hope. That as you carry your cross on this three-day journey, on these 40 days and nights of Lent, as you look towards the cross of Jerusalem where Christ died for us, may we also look to the one who is to come and bring God's kingdom in final victory. Friends, may we go in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to love God and to love our neighbors. Amen.